Hello, welcome to Cast Theology, channel about theology and beer. Welcome back to my What Is series, my series where I'm taking a beer or a piece of theology and explaining it. Today we're going to look at a type of beer that covers a wide range of styles. Yep, today we're going to be looking at the Pale Ale. Now the first Pale Ales were created in the mid-1800s when a new technique was discovered for drying out malt. The market for beer at this point comprised of a very few styles and it was dominated by very dark beers such as porters and milds. The new methods for drying out malts created a much paler malt which when combined with hops made for a very potent combination. Rather than the smooth heavy porters, beer drinkers could now quaff a light refreshing bitter drink at the end of the day. They were generally weaker than the popular IPAs being shipped across the British Empire but that did not affect their popularity. Now, although we know them as pale ales today, this style of beer had two names depending on who you were asking. Whilst brewers called the style of beer pale ale after its pale malt, the drinkers themselves in the pubs came up with their own name for it, bitter. In fact, for a lot of its life, this style of beer has been known as bitter. But in recent years, with an explosion of different styles of beer, the name pale ale has returned, partially as a means to describe the kind of ale that it is. Pale ales do tend to describe their look, as they tend to be lighter in colour and they either have very citrusy or flowery tastes to them, or a very hoppy taste. Bitter is now usually reserved for beers that are on the darker end of the spectrum of ale colours. They tend to be a browner colour and go for a smoother, less intense bitter taste. So, now we've had a quick brief history of pale ales and bitters, let's head into the Castleology kitchen and see some ales in action. Welcome back to the Cask Theology Kitchen. This time around I have a microphone so it should be a bit more of a pleasant experience for you guys. So since we're dealing with pale ales today I'm going to try four pale ales. I'm going to start off with the palest and go to the more darker ones. Now the first one I've chosen today is Adnum's Ghost Ship. Let's get it on here. There we go. Now an Adnum's Ghost Ship is what you typically expect a pale ale to look like when because it kind of it looks like it's described um, it's pale and it's an ale uh, now pale ales particularly these types they tend to taste more floral and taste more fruity so you'll get more citrusy kind of tastes or more sort of flowery sort of tastes rather than the more bitter um, taste that I'm going to t talk about later so let's just crack on then Let's just get the glass. There we go. So, look at that head. Now, that would go well up north. It would not go well down south in London. Uh, they prefer a much smaller head than that, but as you can see, this ale is pale. Now let's just move that out of the way and slide that back a bit so you can see a bit more of the contrast. You can see it's not very dark at all. It's got a kind of pale yellowy sort of colour. It's not the palest of ales, but it's not as dark as, say, a porter or a mild, um, which, well, yeah, they look like gravy. Uh, some of them, but that's a pale ale. Next up, we're going to go for an IPA, and uh, yeah, let's uh, go through with that then. But first, I'm going to take these and have a drink of them. Well, that ghost ship definitely went down well, very definite uh, floral notes to it. But next, we're on to IPAs. Now, IPAs died out pretty much once uh, normal pale ales like your sort of ghost ships and your bitters became popular in the 1800s uh, until recently. Now recently we had a big craft ale revolution in the past couple of decades and IPA came back big style and it soared in popularity. Um, it's kind of associated a bit with beer snobby hipsters. Um, so you'll often go to like these sort of bars, maybe like your brew dogs and things and you'll see a lot of IPAs in there, they do quite a good IPA. Now, Americas, they love a good IPA, the Americans. Uh, so with this in mind, 
I have picked Goose Island IPA. Um, it's one I've had before. Very nice. Now, IPA stands for Indian Pale Ale. Now, it got its name from its popularity in the old British Empire uh, because these these were very highly hopped uh, beers. Hops helped preserve the beer on its long journey to India back in the day, back in the 1800s, because obviously refrigeration wasn't really a thing. Um, and people just fell in love with it over there. Now, as I said, because it's hoppy, the style leads towards hops and bitterness. Um, and they really do sort of have this sort of punchy, uh, bitter taste to them. So let's just have a quick pour and see how we get on. There we go. Right. So as you can see, it's definitely a pale ale. I mean, look at that colour. It's almost lager like um, very, very pale because they use very pale malts, a lot of hops in there. Now, something to note, uh, which I don't know if you can see, is the volume of the beer. Now, this is 5.9, which is quite strong for a beer. Uh, it's not the strongest I've had, but they do tend to be IPAs stronger than your normal pale ales. Let's just get the ghost ship back in. And the ghost ship, you can maybe pick out, this has got an ABV of 4.5. Uh, these type, uh, so your ghost ships, they tend to be more sessional pale ale, where you can just drink a fair few of them after work. IPAs do tend to lean towards the sort of stronger sort of side. So there we have it. That is the IPA. And as I mentioned before, they tend to be a lot hoppier and a lot bitterer. Um, of course, you, that's that's just a generalisation. They do sometimes have a lot more floral stuff going on, but by and large, uh, they do tend to be on the bitter side of things. Right. So we have dealt with two of the palest of the pale ales. So let's move on and let's go towards the darker shades of pale. So what I'm going to do, as I did before, I'm just going to remove these. I'm going to have a drink of them, and then we shall go for our next beers. Uh, which is going to be what you'd traditionally see as a pale ale uh, in a pub in, say, the 1970s. And then we'll, we'll grab a bitter so you can see the sort of thing that, that I meant. OK, so as before, let's take these. I'm going to have a quick swig of this one. Ooh, very pale and very bitter. And I'll see you in the next section. So finally, we've got two bitters to look at. Uh, here's my two choices. I have Charles Wells Bombardier, and from Acorn Breweries, I have Barnsley Bitter. Now then, both are traditionally referred to as bitters. Uh, when I'm working and I'm asked for a bitter, uh, we have Bombardier on tap, so I give them Bombardier. Uh, this is part of the concept of a bitter. Um, people expect a certain sort of beer when you ask for a bitter. Uh, now. Being a pale ale, um, most people would expect a pale ale nowadays to be sort of fruity and and citrusy and bitter. But quite ironically, these particular bitters aren't really that bitter. They're more on the malty and smooth side. Uh, so they're nowhere near as bitter as, say, like your IPAs and things like that. Um, but let's get pouring and uh, let's have a look at the colours and see what they're like. So first, me bombardier. So that's the bombardier. Now for the acorn. Acorn. 
There we go. So instantly you can see the difference between these and the IPAs. I mean, look at the colour difference. Bombardier and the Barnsley, very dark, uh, not really pale at all. Uh, but when you ask for a bitter in a pub, that's kind of what you expect. Now, you'll notice I've got two different glasses as well. I put the Bombardier in this old glass tankard. Now, the glass tankard, if you watch old TV from, say, the 70s or 80s, you'll see a lot of blokes drinking out of these tankards. Uh, in fact, in the 70s and 80s, 70s and 80s, that, that's pretty much the glass you get when you've got a bitter. Uh, but at the end of the 80s, early 90s, they fell out of favour because they were expensive to make. Um, and they're a bit, yeah, they're a bit weapony, uh, unfortunately, because they were made of solid glass. Um, so early 90s, I definitely saw a shift from these to these, the good old classic Nonics. As I mentioned in my lager episode, uh, they were built with being cheap in mind, um, and they were also in, more increasingly built out of toughened glass. So if you were to lob it at someone, it would basically it'd be like a car window, and it would smash as such into a million little pieces. Absolute nightmare at work when that happens. Now, also worth a note is the volumes on the bottles. Let's just shift these. Don't know if you can read them, but basically. 4.7 and 5, uh, not 5, 3.8, uh, not 5, crikey. So yeah, 4.7, 3.8. If a bitter was above 5%, then they tend to get relabeled uh, as a best bitter or a premium bitter um, to simply denote that they are uh, a much more powerful, powerful ale. So... With that said, there you go. That's two examples of bitters. And and the, the difference is quite obvious, really, isn't it? I mean, look at those. So I hope you enjoyed uh, li this trip to the kitchen where we got to see four different beers today. Uh, and I uh, hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching. Hope you found this video informative. Researching this and drinking this Acorn Barnsley Bitter, I certainly did. Next time, I'll be looking at Mild in my What Is series. So if you want to know about that, why not hit subscribe? Click some of the links below in the description or check out some of my other videos on this channel about either theology or beer. So until next time, folks, grab a drink and keep asking questions.